Hey there, so today we have another review. This is another review from Terrapin, part of the Publix uh, buy one get one six packs. This is a Luau, Luau, this passion fruit orange guava IPA. So POG, um, familiar kind of uh, acronym used in a lot of craft beer and seltzers, but um, passion fruit orange guava. I've seen pineapple orange guava, so passion fruit orange guava. Okay, let's go with that. Uh, what else did they say over here? 6.5% to IPA. Uh, this was, or, I don't know what this I can't exactly, but Best Buy June. No way they're doing a, oh no, they're doing six month Best Buy, right? Yeah. So this was canned about a month ago. We're right, yeah, literally a month ago. That fresh, did I pick this up? Like about, yeah, all right, super fresh. Let's hope so. I mean, they're only coming from like Athens, uh, Georgia, right? Uh, where are they coming at? Yeah, so hopefully it's a month fresh, but hey. So this beer is uh, not hazy at all, yeah. It comes in a light to medium gold color, like a little bit of chill haze on that guy, wonderful fluffy white head. On the nose, yeah, definitely get that big kind of um, pineapple, it's like pineapple flavoring kind of note to it. Yeah, nice aromatic, like, it's almost like peach ring, but like pineapple flavor. So yeah, it's like a, pi a pineapple dish candy. Um, pineapple flavoring, yeah. Orange for sure as well. And it's not like, yeah, it's like oily orange, but sort of orange flavorish too again. Um, not in like a necessarily like bad way, but it's like it's, it's sometimes these juicy hops or offer this kind of like fleshy orangey note. Here we're going on um, really oily orange uh, peel, sort of like, you know, you know, old fashioned. There's orange peel in that and definitely that. And guava, definitely not much guava. Guava for me is very prominent sometimes and I'm not getting that, but cheers. Crunkles is back in another is back with another, who's Crunkles? You guys, we're in the world of Crunkles. You guys gotta tell me about this stuff. It make no sense. Crunkles back uh, uh, with um, another world renowned IPA uh, by his time spent, inspired by the time spent in the Hawaiian Islands, blah, blah, I can read, uh, <laughs> Hawaiian based IPA. So I guess Crunkles is one of his, uh, one of the brewers or brewmasters at, you know, crazy beers, but. So I did share uh, some of the, I mean, they're BOGO. Yeah, I mean, literally the cost of a can is a dollar. Um, try to share some with staff when I, you know, pick it up before work. Um, so, so maybe a good comment. It has a little bit of highlight kind of thing going on. Um, the one thing I can get off of highlight is this really oily orange slash tangerine character. Um, the hops just express that. Here, I guess it's an orange IPA, but um, I get that flavoring too. Um, there's definitely a pulled back crystal malt character compared to High Lie, which has some of that kind of rich uh, crystal malt sweetness, which is really nice, like not in a bad way, which is like a really pretty way. Here, it's pulled back, so. But if you're a High Lie fan, you certainly up front get this big smack of just sweet, oily. I mean, it, it, it's the same, you know, flavor that um, um, High Lie has. I think with a, um, I mean, full blind or with a, you know, not, not caring palate like you know sometimes you drink things not really like focusing like trying to zone or anything you could easily guess it was a highlight you know it's just got that oily character up front um a little bit of biscuity malt but obviously not as sweet as highlight um bitterness is definitely more reserved so malt character and um, hop character is definitely more reserved but it's got that signature kind of sweet oily citrus character that I love in, I mean, that's, <laughs> I can talk smack about beer all, all you want about Florida, but well, the one thing we do have is, you know, I'm less than two hours away from a brewery that makes, in my opinion, one of the best mass produced IPAs in the country. I mean, High Lie is just a crusher. Um, High Lie is my pick. Some people go, you know, Bell's Too Hard is, some people go, I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know what people, I guess some people go like wine pay. I don't know. No, I, I don't, I, I'm not actually quite sure what the regional picks are, but for sure, a lot, a lot, a lot of people pick Bell's Too Hearted. Not me. I go High Lie. Yeah, it's quite nice. Um, six five. It's not a big IPA. It's you know on the you know moderate, yeah, moderate side. Um, super crushable. It's a new age kind of IPA in the sense that it's really restrained on crystal malt. Definitely like barely under bitterness on this guy, but they've really replicated again. What are the this flavor is that I get from Highlight is really citrusy, oily character. I don't know if they're, um, I assume they're actually adding actual fruit, but somehow that's imitated into Highlight, which is a regular non-fruit IPA. Um, the pineapple and guava, nowhere 
or passion fruit, what's passion fruit, whatever. I, I have no clue what they're talking about. Um, the advertisement is completely wrong on this. It's just, it's not taste like fruited IPA at all, um, but you definitely get a really oily, um, citrusy character up front. Very tasty. Let's go with a. Honestly, as good as the um, high and hazy was, I think this beer is actually better. It's just more attractive. It's easier drinking. That beer was just like very light and dank and pretty, but this beer is just more crushable, I think. Hmm, actually, I don't know. Because it is less complex. Outside of that one flavor note up front, it does sort of remind you a little bit of like a macro-ish IPA where like the 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 depth and the range of flavor in the beer is like tight and there's not much going on. I sort of get that. Like there's a little bit of like um, dankness and soily character on the back end, a little bit of bitterness, but outside of that really fresh character up front, the malt's not really quite doing much for me. The bitterness is not really quite there and it just doesn't do much. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go with a solid 80. Eight, 88. That is, um, I really prefer this guy. So the last beer. That flavor is really nice and fresh though. You know what? Let's call it a wash. This also gets a solid 90. Both beers are 90. Terrapin, Luau. Hey, shelfies. Uh, these are some good shelfies. I mean, fresh, like this fresh. I really like more from it. Like if you get a month, month fresh IPA, you know, from a top 50 size craft brewery, I, I'd want it to be like a 95. At least that's my goal. But um, it is what it is. Very tasty. Fresh. Get a fresh. I can't imagine this beer any older than that. Any older, like, if it degrades in any hop character in that really, really rich um, hop character that I get up front, um, if that goes away, this beer is terrible, useless. <laughs> so 90 for me. The Terrapin beers were nice and solid. Very, very good. Check them out. Obviously, by now, when I post this, it won't be fresh for the buy one, get ones. But if you guys are in the, um, I guess, southeast, Publix is a gem. Um, buy one, get one. All kinds of stuff. I buy... Uh, geez, popcorn we bought today. Um, I don't know what else they do. Tomato sauce, <laughs> broth, broth, tons of broth. We're making soups, we're doing hot pot, broth. Love it, beer, love it. Publix, go. And then we all, we like every week, eat at least one or two pub subs and they're all kinds of stuff. So Publix is pretty dope. That's one of the cool things about Florida. So High Lies, dope about Florida and Publix, dope about Florida. There you go, that's a hot take. And uh, this beer gets an idea. Until next time, guys, cheers later.